Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. Rostenberg with Beyond MTHFR, and today I'm sharing with you a smaller video, but an important topic that relates to MTHFR and estrogen. It has a lot to do with how we produce estrogen. We're going to touch a little bit on the detox pathways involved in getting rid of estrogen, but I really want to focus today on where estrogen comes from and why we have too much of it. Uh, the research and all the data that's coming out from the biochemical sciences is really highlighting the fact that uh, across the board, men, women, children, um, we have an imbalance of, of hormonal activity and it's creating some significant health challenges. It's increasing rates of cancer, it's causing infertility, it's lowering testosterone, it's, it's affecting you know, prostate survival and breast cancer rates. So we, we really need to focus on this topic uh, it is absolutely a methylation-related topic because MTHFR and other pathways like COMT and other detox pathways have so much of an influence on how well an individual handles estrogen. And whether it's a young woman on birth control having horrible side effects from that or, again, uh, a man in their later in life dealing with uh, prostate issues and everybody in between, um, balancing estrogen makes a, an important difference. So, so we're going to focus today on understanding aromatase and what this enzyme is. Uh, before I get into that though, we got to look at the, the big picture and there's this just massive amount of people in our country who have blood sugar problems. Journal of the American Medical Association just a few years ago basically laid it out and said, hey, there's 150 million people with diabetes or pre-diabetes. It's not getting better. Um, we have to change what we eat and how we move and we have to work on that and, um, and it can change but there's just so far the trend is still in the wrong direction. There's more and more people getting diagnosed with this problem as time goes on. The problem with having high blood sugar is that you produce more fat. Uh, the excess blood, uh, the insulin resistance raises glucose. Glucose is converted into fat. That's what your body does when glucose is high. It stores the fat. And now you look at um, sort of the global picture here, the big picture, this is back from 2016, 76% of the world is over fat, which means they might be skinny fat, they might stand on a scale and they're not too heavy, but what they're made of on the inside, it's not the right components. They have too much fat packed around their kidney, their liver, their intestines, in their muscles. And really what this uh, shocking kind of um, study said is that for the first time in human history, the number of obese people worldwide now exceeds those who are underweight. So literally, you're more at risk today in this world to be sick and die of a chronic disease from eating empty calories than you are from starving. That's kind of amazing. Um, to say nothing of the people who still starve, there's just far more people who are really unhealthy because they eat the wrong food and um, we need to do a better job. In the United States, the data isn't much better. Three quarters of every man and two thirds of every woman are overweight. And you can't be overweight without having excess of fat tissue. And this is the problem that we're going to get into today. The, the excess of fat tissue is the risk. Okay, it's not a silent tissue. It's not like a, you know, a quiet part of your body. It's, it's, it's pretty much like an endocrine organ. So if you triple the size of your you know, thyroid, they call that goiter and it's an emergency. It could, it could really damage you and risk your life. And if you triple the size of your fat tissue, it, it can also do the same thing. It just takes a lot longer for it to impact you. Because fat tissue produces hormones. It's not, like I said, it's not just a quiet tissue where your body just puts stuff on the, on the shelf in the cabinet and closes the door. It's always secreting hormones. It's producing inflammation, it's changing your brain, it's incredible what too much fat tissue can do to you. And so this data coming out just last year is really highlighting the risk. The risk in the world as a whole, the risk in our country, is that all these people with diabetes are contributing to this giant group of people who are overweight. And when you have too much fat tissue from being overweight, you increase your risk of cancer. And it's because of how fat tissue expresses an enzyme called aromatase, which we're going to get into. Aromatase is what produces estrogen. It's a one-way street. Once your body makes estrogen, it cannot go back and unproduce it. So when we make testosterone as men, we hope that the testosterone lives in our body long enough to keep us, you know, keep our body 
um, benefiting from that hormone as we're designed to before our body uh, turns into the estrogen. So a man who's overweight has low testosterone because simply the fat tissue is converting his testosterone into estrogen. In females, the same problem. Too much fat tissue in a woman vastly increases her estrogen and that makes, raises her risk of cervical, uterine, um, breast cancer, all kinds of other you know, health issues that go along with that, infertility, um, cycle imbalances, you know, menstrual irregularities, PMS, cramping, clotting, endometriosis, fibroids, derma, you know, tumors in the uterus, all these different things relate back to too much estrogen. And in men, of course, the analogous would be testicular cancer and prostate cancer, all, both, all of which are increasing. So we know that smoking is bad and people are stopping smoking, but now we have the obesity epidemic that's going to be, if, not, if it isn't already, the leading cause, preventable cause for cancer. And this is coming out from a major journal just last year. So we know this excess of body fat isn't a good thing. Um, and, it's, and it's based on the fact that fat tissue expresses aromatase. Just a quick review really fast on um, looking at your um, detox pathways. There's phase one detox, which we'll talk about in a second. This is phase two. And there's several different ways that our body gets rid of garbage. The ones I've circled here have, have the word phenol inside there under, this, under the, you know, what it actually helps your body get rid of. It gets rid of phenols. Phenols are found in your gut, they're found in your food, but they're also uh, what estrogen is. So estrogen and progesterone, these are like phenolic compounds that your body has to detoxify. Otherwise, you could get full of estrogen and have all these side effects. So here's the, here's the MTHFR pathway, um, the methyl group, that, that handles phenols. This one up here is glucuronic acid. That relates to blood sugar. Again, going back half the country, has diabetes or pre-diabetes, so there's a lot of insulin resistance. Some people are hypoglycemic, their blood sugar's too low, they're too stressed out, they're not eating enough, they're skipping meals, etc. So there's a lot of people out there uh, with blood sugar issues, both high and low, that would make this glucuronic acid process slow down. So they would have poor detox here. Then if they happen to have a methylation issue, they could have poor detox in this category. Uh, that would also affect this third category, the sulfuric acid, sulfate. So these three things, these three pathways that are completely um, sort of focused on, on balancing hormones are all susceptible to genetic issues and other health problems. This is why when we work with patients, we all, we're always trying to figure out if their digestion is working normally, if they're sleeping correctly, what their history of hormone imbalances is like, what their exposure to antibiotics is like, what their genetics look like, because you have to understand all those different factors that could affect these pathways. Um, so we're really predisposed. Just just leave you with this thought here before we go to the next slide. We're, we're just predispo predisposed to having high levels of estrogen. We're, most of us are overweight, and we have all these genetic SNPs and these pathways, and we have blood sugar issues that hurt our detox. So those two things combined make it really common that people have high estrogen. Another way to look at the detox or the estrogen handling process is to look at phase one. And so this comes from um, the report that I like to look at from Sterling Hill, uh, mthfrsupport.com. And you can get this report if you do your ancestry DNA and then download the raw data and then upload it to Sterling's uh, app and get the variant report. This is this is the one that we found to be the most useful uh, that's out there on the market. So the moral of the story here is these these um, genes, these these genetic markers that have highlighted these have to do with estrogen handling. So you know you look at it and you see do you see red? Do you see green? Um, red obviously means this pathway is altered from normal. In fact, this one is sped up, the CYP1B1, that means that's going faster. The CYP1A2 is actually going slower, so it takes quite a bit of uh, study and detail to learn all these nuances, and you don't need to know that if you're just a, you know, average, you know, you're not a provider and out there um, doing this for a living, but you just need to know that that genetic report can help point um, me and my team or other doctors like us, can help us understand where you're gonna have weaknesses um, with detoxifying estrogen. So we talked about phase two, now we talked about phase one. But I want you to look at the difference now. I really like this slide. I wanted to share this with you today just to leave you with this. So, so far we've talked about 
there's a lot of blood sugar problems in the society, okay, that's leading to people being heavy. There's more heavy people on earth than there are people like starving with really skinny arms and a swollen belly. Like we, we have, we're literally hit this point where there's so much blood sugar mess and our diets are so messed up and our lifestyles are so messed up that there's more people suffering from the side effects of being too heavy than are starving to death. Um, I would prefer that we don't have either one of those, but just an interesting occurrence. And as we gain fat tissue, we have an overabundance of this enzyme right here called aromatase. And so this is the pie chart of phase one and the pie chart of phase two. And what this means is this sort of shows you in your body how much your body invests into each category, which it really helps me as a clinician and a researcher to go, okay, cool. So the CYP1A1 and 1A2 genes and the CYP1B1s that are responsible for phase one estrogen uh, breakdown, they're like this little slice up here. But this gene over here, CYP3A4, it's huge. It, it has so much more of an importance in like the liver's detoxification than these two. It just helps you compare and contrast them. I mean, they're all important, but it, this helps you see sort of the, um, the way the body uses these different pathways. They're not, all, the, all of these pie slices are not even, right? So the, some are huge and some are really skinny. It's good to keep that in mind. But this one right here called CYP2C19, that's aromatase. That is the gene responsible, the enzyme that, turn, that produces estrogen. So when there's excess body fat, this is the enzyme that's overproducing uh, estrogen because it's made in fat tissue. The more fat tissue, the more estrogen. The more diabetes, the more your blood sugar's off, the more there's body fat accumulation, and the more there's expression of this aromatase, which leads an individual, man or woman, to having too much estrogen. So compare that to phase two. Again, I mentioned the, um, uh, the phase two genes just a couple slides ago, but here's, a, here's an indication how important blood sugar is. This is the detoxification that happens when you have healthy blood sugar, and it's 40% of your whole body's detox. So when you have a diabetic issue, when you have low blood sugar, when you're insulin resistant, you don't detox well because 40% of your body's detox depends on blood sugar working normally and it's not working normally in, in those individuals. Conversely, when we look at sulfur, the STs here, that's about 20% of the pathway. Glutathione is important. A lot of people have heard of that. That's about 15% of the pathway. And so you can see that I really like this slide just because uh, it's educational for me, again, as a researcher and a practitioner, and some of you out there are going to like seeing this, that it just helps to show you, um, you know, not all genes are created equal, right? Some genes are really highly uh, important. They have a ton of bandwidth that the body dedicates to, and other genes, it's a lot smaller. So it's important to keep that in mind. So in closing here, uh, again, this is an incomplete discussion on this topic. This is a huge, important topic, but I just wanted to share with you the idea that uh, we're dealing with high rates of cancer in our society like we've never, ever seen before. And we're dealing with rates of infertility like we've never seen before, rates of uh, you know obesity, diabetes, and the just dysfunction and pain and suffering that goes with that. There, there's a lot of that out there. All of those issues relate back to the fact that body fat produces estrogen through aromatase. When people with MTHFR problems, COMT issues, poor phase two detox, poor gallbladder function, poor digestion, okay, when those individuals of whom we know a lot of people like that, it's a very common problem, those individuals are gonna be the first ones dealing with the side effects of too much estrogen. There are ways to treat that naturally, effectively, logically, safely, and that's what we do in our practice. So if you're out there and you're, this video connects with you and you see, you see yourself or someone you love in this video, um, you know, reach out to us. We'd love to help you. Um, I'll try to get some more videos done here that can um, shed even more light on this issue. It's a big topic, but it's super important. So all those hormone problems we have going on out there absolutely relate to MTHFR, the ability to detox estrogen, and if you don't have the right vitamin levels, if you're not having the right nutrition in your body, if you've got these other holes in your bucket like we talked about with digestion or um, you know hidden infections, that kind of thing, it just slows everything down. And um, 
there's there's a way there's a way forward. We'd we'd uh, love to talk to you about that. So if you have any questions, guys, uh, reach out. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video, and we will talk to you again soon. Take care. Bye bye.